In 1987, a geeky and ambitious girl named Jenna Rink dreamed of being attractive. The little girl is not a head-turner, so she tries her best to belong to the Six Chicks, a group of popular, bullying, and attractive ladies on the campus. Tom Tom, the group's leader, was taking advantage of Jenna. It was fine to the lady because the Six Chicks were close to Chris Grandy, her ultimate crush. Chris is the most popular guy in school, and all the girls are dying to be noticed by him. Jenna believes if she becomes Six Chicks, Chris will lay his eyes on her. Matt, her chubby childhood best friend, wants to wake her up from being delusional. It was obvious that the six chicks would never be her friends, and Chris won't ever like her. Jenna disagreed, she kept insisting she was one step closer to having his heart. Jenna will soon be celebrating her 13th birthday. She will throw a party at home after the six chicks accept her invitation. The special day came, and Jenna was so excited about her birthday celebration later. Matt, who dreamed of being a photographer, grabbed his camera and took photos with the birthday girl. Suddenly, Tom Tom and the group were walking toward them. All the students make their way as the six chicks pass by them. Matt hates the overconfident six chicks, so he excuses himself to Jenna and promises to wait outside. Tom Tom informed Jenna that her crush, Chris, would also attend her party. Unfortunately, there was a group project proposal to be submitted the next day, so they couldn't come. Jenna offered to make the report just for them to attend the celebration. The six chicks were laughing inside. They couldn't believe how fooled she was for not noticing they were only faking friendship. Jenna, on the other hand, can't stop smiling after having a conversation with the group. Her party would be special because of their presence. Matt was secretly in love with Jenna, and he was against her inviting the six chicks. For him, she is way cooler and more original than Tom Tom, and she can be popular in her ways. Jenna looked at him with disgust. She doesn't want to be original but to belong in the six chicks group. She feels proud the famous girls will attend her party. Jenna went to her room and put on makeup. Beside the mirror is her favorite fashion magazine, Poise. Models of Poise are indeed pretty, and their look was Jenna's inspiration for her makeup. The lady wore her sky blue top and dark skirt to complete the disco outfit. Her parents went inside the room to record a video of her first day as a teenager. They greeted her, and her dad was the one holding the camera. Jenna hid her face because she hated cameras. She knows she doesn't look good in it. Her mom cheered her up and said she was beautiful in her ways. The teenager went to the basement where the celebration was held. She put on the television Michael Jackson's hit, Thriller, and imitated the dance craze. She loves dancing with her best friend. In fact, they have memorized the steps. Shortly after, the thoughtful Matt gave his gift. It was in a big box, and Jenna looked excited to open it. Matt knew she loved Barbie, so he made her a pink dollhouse with some of her favorite things inside. On the second floor, she was in a bubble bath reading Poise magazine. There were mini stereos in the next room since she loved music, and Matt was downstairs holding a camera to protect her from harm. The young boy also sprinkled wishing dust on the house, hoping one day, Jenna's dreams and wishes would come true. The doorbell rang, and the lady rattled to fix the place to make it presentable. Matt was hurt that she hid the house in the storage room and reasoned out they needed a space to dance. Jenna welcomed the six chicks. She was all smiling, but they never greeted her. They went inside, removed their jackets, and let the birthday girl carry all of them. As usual, it was fine for Jenna as long as she made friends with them. Shortly after, a car stopped by. It was Chris Grandy with his friends. Jenna's world stops as she stares at the tall and attractive Chris. She couldn't believe that her crush made an effort to attend her party. At the basement, the six chicks and Chris stared with disgust at Matt. He was playing old disco music that wasn't their type. They call him a freak for dancing to an outdated song. The bully, Tom Tom, stopped the music, so Matt asked permission to leave Jenna to get his instrument. After he left, Tom Tom suggested they should play Seven Minutes in Heaven. She blindfolded Jenna in the closet and told the lady that Chris would be the one to come first inside. The teenager got excited and hid in the cabinet as instructed by Tom Tom. Little did she know, the six chicks and the boys left after finding the project proposal she had made. They also brought with them some snacks from the party. On their way to escape, they met Matt, who was confused about them running away. Tom Tom said Jenna was waiting for him in the cabinet. Matt got excited, thinking Jenna wanted to see him. He opened the cabinet and saw her inside, blindfolded. Jenna, on the other hand, was delighted to hear that someone had opened the closet. She slowly removed her blindfold but freaked out seeing Matt in front of her. She pushed him away and discovered that the six chicks and Chris had left. Jenna got mad at Matt. She thought he was the reason why her friends went away. She banged the cabinet's door and cursed everyone. She hates everything in her life, even herself. Jenna wished to be 30 flirty and thriving, like the article in Poise magazine. She believes that her 30-year-old self is beautiful and successful. The dollhouse was shaking, and the wishing dust sparkled. It echoed Jenna's voice wishing to be 30. The next day, Jenna woke up after falling from bed. She banged her head on the door and realized she was still wearing blindfolds. She went outside the room and got confused. She was not in the basement or at their house. Terrified, Jenna called her mom and dad. 
They never answered, so she continued looking around an unfamiliar apartment. She freaked out seeing herself in the mirror. She looks mature like a lady in her 30s. Surprisingly, her nose is pointed, and she has body curves to flaunt. Jenna liked her appearance, however, she had no idea how it all happened. In the living area, the lady saw mail addressed to her. The date indicated 2004, and the address was in New York. Jenna wanted to confirm if everything she discovered were fact, so she dialed her parents' number. A recorded ringtone said they left for a Caribbean trip, and they could not entertain calls. Jenna felt lonely. She never knew her mom and dad would have a vacation without her. Jenna got up after hearing music on the table. It kept ringing, but she didn't know what it was. Suddenly, a man's voice was heard in the bathroom. Jenna rattled. She grabbed an umbrella to attack the man. The door opened, and he was topless. Jenna freaked out and ran outside with her coat and bag. In the lobby, she heard the strange music again. She never knew where it came from, but it kept following her. A blonde woman in a taxi keeps calling her name. She was forcing her to get inside because they would be late for work. Jenna had no idea who she was and why she knew her. She refused to go with her, but the topless man from the apartment looked out the window, calling her name. Jenna had no choice but to go with the blonde lady. She also learned that the strange music was coming from a cell phone, a portable communication device used in the year 2004. Lucy, Jenna's workmate, and best friend wondered why the lady acted strange. She kept calling her earlier, but she never responded. She might be drunk last night, so she forgot about the emergency meeting that would start in 10 minutes. Inside the taxi, Jenna told Lucy she had a weird dream and woke up in 2004. She was sure to be 13, and she recently celebrated her birthday. Lucy laughed at her and thought she was pregnant. Jenna swore she was not lying, and a strange man was also inside her apartment. Lucy was stressed at work, so she let her talk until she got tired. Jenna was amused to see they were heading to the Poise magazine building. She freaked out, learning she was a big-time executive editor of the company. Inside, everyone was all busy with paperwork. The lady was amused, she got an assistant named Arlene, and she was asking what coffee to buy. Richard, the boss, complained that Lucy and Jenna were late again. He seemed bothered about something, and they headed to the conference room. Jenna sat on her chair as if she knew about their topic. Arlene gave her the coffee and asked what else she wanted. She remembered her best friend Matt, so she requested her to find his address. Jenna fell to the floor after the boss raised his voice. Everyone in the meeting looked at her and found her strange. She used to be a formal, high-tempered, brilliant editor, but she was wearing nighties today. Lucy explained she attended a party last night and woke up late. Richard tore Sparkle's magazine in front of them. Sparkle is Poise's biggest competitor in the industry, and he wondered why they've had similar magazine issues since the start of the year. And currently, in the June issue, they featured the same model, front page, and magazine title for the month. Richard speculated that someone from his team was spying on Sparkle. Lucy agreed. She said Jenna fired an employee yesterday because she caught her writing down notes for Sparkle. Jenna had no idea about it, but she nodded yes for them to stop asking her. Richard continued and informed everyone there will be a company party later. They have to think of an idea on how to convince the guests. That poise remains the leading fashion magazine in New York. Jenna went to her office and saw some portraits displayed on the walls. She wondered why she had some photos of the topless guy earlier and a fan sign from Madonna. By looking around the working area, it appears she has achieved many things in life. However, she got curious about how time flies so fast after her 13th birthday that she never remembered meeting Madonna. Someone knocked on the door, and it was her secretary. Arlene informed the lady her parents had called earlier. Jenna got mad for not letting her know about it. The assistant finds her strange. She doesn't want to be disturbed by family calls, and she almost fired her the last time because of that. Jenna felt bad. She never knew she did that to her parents. Arlene also told her she found Matt's address. Jenna went to Matt's apartment. Jenna opened up to him and said that something strange had happened when she woke up. She hugged him so tight, but he was cold to her. He was not the energetic and sweet Matt she knew. It was that moment when Jenna discovered they were not friends anymore. They never met after high school because she had a different circle of friends, and they took another college course. Jenna almost had a breakdown, overwhelmed with the new information about her life from Matt. She acted like a kid and asked for a fluffy pillow to calm herself. Matt, on the other hand, was surprised she visited. He was wondering why she acted like she never knew herself. He doesn't know her life either because they were not on good terms for over a decade. He missed her so much and was glad to see her again. Matt accompanied her home. To help her remember everything, he let her open the high school photo album he had compiled. Jenna was delighted to know she had become the leader of the six chicks. She realized that Tom Tom was Lucy, and they became best friends eventually. Matt said that Lucy had plastic surgery, which is why she never recognized her. Jenna flipped another page and saw she became the prom queen and her crush, Chris Grandy, was her king. She could not believe she got everything she wanted, including her job at Poise magazine. Matt, on the other hand, was her opposite. He never achieved anything in life, even his dream to become a famous photographer. Jenna's phone rang. It was about the limousine reservation she had never booked. The attendant replied that her assistant had made the reservation and that the vehicle would take her to the company's party. The lady was amused. She jumped on the couch, excited to ride in a limo. 
Before Mac could leave, she invited him to the party. The man left the apartment smiling. He was extremely happy with the thought of reconciling with Jenna. Later that night, Jenna wore a neon green dress and makeup. She looked like a party girl from 1987 with her disco outfit. The lady went inside the elevator and met a teenager named Becky. They were the same age, and the 13-year-old inside her wanted to be her friend. Becky, on the other hand, wondered why Jenna talked to her. They were neighbors, but she was never that friendly before. Regardless, she complimented her dress, and they became friends after. Jenna invited the young lady to visit her apartment sometime. She owns different girly bags, and Becky can have some if she wants to. Jenna felt alive seeing the black limo waiting for her. She couldn't stop smiling, watching the city lights at the window of the vehicle's roof. At the party, she saw Lucy stunning in her mermaid dress. Richard approached them and complimented their look. He told the ladies to enjoy the night and dance. Loud music filled the air, but Jenna never liked it. She found the party boring and went upstairs to drink glasses of cocktails. After feeling tipsy, she went back to Lucy. They were laughing as they talked about men. Suddenly, Lucy noticed Trish Sackett, editor of Sparkle magazine, blending into the crowd. She also approached them and spoke rudely. Jenna stared at her with disgust. She might be the reason why Sparkle was copying their monthly magazine issues. She only left after Jenna insulted her. Richard, on the other hand, was bothered that the guests were already leaving when it was still 11 p.m. They were not interested in poise anymore, and it concerned him. He approached Lucy and Jenna about it. Jenna told the man it was the music that made the party boring. Lucy and Richard disagreed because their declining sales made the people not interested. Jenna insisted she was right. The lady went to the music operator and requested something. The DJ played Michael Jackson's hit Thriller. Jenna went to the dance floor all alone. She was embarrassed at first, especially when the spotlight beamed on her. The crowd watched the lady and laughed. Lucy and Richard wanted to hide out of embarrassment for Jenna. However, people making fun of her never stopped the lady from dancing to her favorite song. She showcased her moves and looked confident on the floor. Her movement was on point, and the crowd was impressed with her. Matt came and saw his best friend all alone dancing. He joined her when the spotlight was focused on him. Jenna was delighted to see Matt supporting her. They never danced it for almost 15 years, but the muscle memory worked. They looked good together, and everyone was encouraged to join the dance craze. The crowd became alive, and more and more people showcased their thriller moves. Lucy and Richard also joined. The boss danced to the beat and proudly showed everyone he could moonwalk. The crowd was cheering for him, and they all enjoyed the night, thanks to Jenna. Days passed, and Jenna seized the moments of her life at 30. She shopped on weekends and partied with Lucy. One night, Lucy told her that a hot guy was checking her out. Jenna was flattered and looked behind to see the man. He was indeed attractive, and she found him cute. Jenna stood up to meet the guy, but Lucy freaked out when the lady approached a 13-year-old boy. The teenager inside Jenna was dying to know him. Lucy pulled her out and thought she was crazy. Outside the club, Jenna saw the topless guy again. People were circling him to get an autograph. She wondered why he kept staring and calling her beautiful. She learned from Lucy that he was Alex, her boyfriend, and a famous hockey player. He was undoubtedly attractive, but Jenna never had romantic feelings for him. After a while, Jenna was delighted to see Matt on the streets. She missed him so much and hugged him. Matt was also glad to see the lady, and his eyes kept sparkling, staring at her. Suddenly, a lady from a shop went near them. It was Matt's fiancée. He was so proud to introduce her to Jenna. She is an anchor person for weather reports in Chicago, and Matt plans to move with her after the wedding. Jenna felt heartbroken. She was surprised to find out her best friend would be marrying soon. It felt awkward, but she pretended to be happy for him. Alex approached them. Jenna introduced him as her boyfriend. Matt was too stunned to speak since he was a fan of Alex. After a fun conversation, Matt and his fiancée left. Alex invited Jenna to go to his place. Before she agreed, she consulted Lucy first if it would be safe to go alone with him. The lady finds her crazy. She wanted to date a teenage boy but hesitated to go with her boyfriend. The next day, Becky seeks Jenna's advice about love. The teenager fell in love with a boy, but he never felt the same. Jenna told her that love is a battlefield and she must fight for the one she loves. Becky was impressed by her lines. She can count on her like a big sister. After the quick conversation, Jenna headed to the office. Inside the conference room, the editors and writers were thinking of exciting topics for the magazine. Suddenly, Richard came in with bad news. Poise only made 600,000 sales compared to Sparkle's million. The directors instructed him to redesign Poise or else they will lose their job. Lucy finds it impossible to redesign since Poise is a long-time magazine in the city. Jenna, on the other hand, was positive they could do it. For her, it would be fun to take down Sparkle in that idea. Richard applauded her positive mindset. He instructed her and Lucy to work together to create a better version of Poise. After the conference, Jenna walks to her office. Arlene informed her she received calls from people, and she wrote them down on paper. Jenna reads it, and she was shocked that a writer was mad after she stole her scoop. A wife of her office mate accused her of sleeping with her husband. Shortly after, Pete from the art department came to her office and kissed her. 
Because of that, she discovered that her 30-year-old self was having an affair with him. Jenna kicked her and went out of her office. She was bothered to know all the mistakes her adult version committed. Outside her office, she overheard Lucy talking to a colleague. They talked behind her for stealing Charlotte's idea and firing her after. They also noticed she seemed lost for the past few days, and Lucy got tired of working with her. She told the lady to hire the best photographer in the city. She plans to create an idea to redesign Poise on her own without Jenna knowing. She wants their boss to terminate her right away. Jenna had a breakdown with all the revelations. She went home crying and disappointed in how she turned out as a bad person. She was a shy and sweet girl then, and she couldn't believe it all had changed instantly. Jenna wants Matt's comfort, so she goes to his apartment. She invited him for a walk to talk about many things. Jenna asked what had happened to their friendship back then. Matt told the lady that it all started after the Seven Minutes in Heaven game. He sang a happy birthday song to her, but she got mad at him after the six chicks and Chris left. She threw the dollhouse on his face that he made for her. Since that day, she never talked to him anymore, which is how their friendship broke. Jenna was tearily apologizing to Matt. She never realized how rude she was. She continued crying, asking him if he had an idea how she lived her adult life. She discovered she never had real friends, stole the writer's idea, had an affair with a married man, and refused to talk to her parents. Matt couldn't respond and felt bad for her. Jenna ran away, embarrassed of herself. The lady decided to visit her hometown in New Jersey. She arrived at their house and went inside the closet in the basement. She couldn't stop crying as she regretted everything she had done to Matt. That same night, her parents came home. She hugged them tight and missed them so much. She felt bad for ignoring their calls at work. Now, she wanted to compromise for treating them badly. She spent the night with her parents and slept beside her mother. The next day, Jenna asked her mom if she regretted making a mistake. The old woman replied she never regretted anything. She was even glad because those mistakes taught her to make things right. Jenna returned to New York feeling motivated. This time, she wants to do the right thing, like her mom. She looked at the high school photo album that Matt had made himself. Suddenly, an idea popped into her mind. Jenna worked overtime for the whole week. She met Lucy on the elevator, who was also working late. She boasted about an idea for the redesign, but she wanted to do it on her own. Jenna was never bothered. She revealed she was also working on something, and her confidence left Lucy intimidated. The next day, Jenna met Matt at the park. She wants to hire him for a week to work with her. Matt, on the other hand, was delighted to accept such opportunity. He was willing to take on the project to improve his photography skills. Jenna cast people from young to old with unique stories to tell. She wants to feature the real life of different ages in the magazine. Matt and Jenna had fun working together, which was reflected in their output. Matt captured the most amazing photos since he started photography. After the tiring week, Jenna invited him out to eat some Razzles, their favorite candy when they were kids. Fortunately, it was available in the old candy store. They went out walking in the cold breeze of the night. They had fun eating Razzles and reminisced about the good old days. Jenna stared at Matt and confessed he was the sweetest guy she had met. Matt was flattered and invited her to play swing at the park. They attempted to swing farther, but both landed on the ground, laughing. Matt couldn't hide his happiness being with his best friend. He was lost in the moment and kissed her. It was the most romantic gesture that he showed to Jenna. Jenna, on the other hand, feels she is floating in the clouds. It was so magical that she shared it with Becky and her friends. The little girls were amused by her love story since they also dreamed of meeting a guy like Matt. They asked Jenna if she was in love with him. Silence filled the air. Jenna explained their relationship is complicated, and it's not meant to be shared with teenagers like them. She promised to share it once they all grew up. She ended the night by telling them to fight for the ones they love. The next day, Jenna prepared the visual aid for the proposal to redesign Poise. She asked Arlene's help to print out the photos. The assistant was impressed by Matt's photography. Because of his outputs, Jenna and her team were motivated to work hard to give justice to his talent. Matt, on the other hand, was looking forward to his date with Jenna. The lady promised to celebrate the night after presenting the proposal to Richard. He marked the calendar to make sure he won't forget the special day. Suddenly, someone covered his eyes to surprise him. Matt got excited. He never expected Jenna to arrive, but it turns out it was his fiancée. Wendy. She wanted to surprise him, so she never informed him she had returned home. On the day of the presentation, Richard freaked out after learning that Jenna was working on another idea instead of doing it with Lucy. He felt nervous about her plan, knowing she had seemed lost for the past weeks. Jenna replied it was never a bad idea because he would have more choices. Richard commanded her to stop working independently and let Lucy present the idea. Jenna did not listen. She continued printing the materials with Arlene even if they were already late to the conference. Lucy presented her proposal, but it was dull and common. She was pissed that Richard did not like it, so she threw everything around the office. The employees were shocked by the mess she created. It was time for Jenna's idea. She stood in front and presented her crazy plan. Her proposal was about changing the women featured in the magazine. Instead of models, she wants women of different ages with inspiring stories to be featured. 
For her, it is now time to put life in the magazine and bring laughter, silliness, and joy to the readers. Silence filled the room. Richard stood up and applauded her idea. It will be the proposal he will present to the corporate the next day. Jenna was flattered. She proudly told him that Matt was behind the amazing pictures she showed. Jenna rushed outside to inform Matt that Richard wanted to hire him. Little did she know, Matt went inside the office seconds after she left. Lucy, on the other hand, heard about Jenna's successful presentation. She went to her office to look at her things. She was impressed with the photos and visual aids she used. She felt jealous, so she opened her drawer to find something. Instead of finding more information about the proposal, she found strange mail inside. It was from Trish Sackett. Matt went to Jenna's office and saw Lucy there. Lucy was delighted to see him. She knew he wanted to ask how Jenna's presentation went. She told the guy that Jenna never used his photos because she would love to work with a more established photographer. Matt was hurt, so he left the building. Jenna arrived at Matt's apartment. When he opened the door and informed the lady that he had left to get his tuxedo. Jenna learned that their wedding would be tomorrow. She could not explain why she was hurt instead of feeling happy for her best friend. The next day, Jenna was practicing her report for the corporate meeting when Richard interrupted her. The meeting was cancelled because Lucy stole her idea. She presented it to Sparkle, and they hired her as the new editor-in-chief. The photos of Matt were already released and advertised around the city. Even buses were used to promote Sparkle's latest issue, and everyone looked forward to securing a copy. Jenna wondered if Lucy had asked permission from Matt. Richard showed her a copy of the photo release contract that Matt had signed. Jenna grabbed the paper and confronted Lucy about it. Lucy was not bothered. She told her about the mail she found in her drawer. She was communicating with Trish Sackett, which was why Sparkle and Poise's magazine issues were similar for the past months. Jenna froze upon hearing that. She realized that the rumors were true about her stealing ideas from other people. She was also concerned about what Lucy said to Matt. Jenna rushed to New Jersey to talk to Matt. She rode in a taxi and discovered the driver was Chris Grandy. Before, Chris was never interested in her. Now that she's a famous editor, he was dying to date her. He was flirting and kept asking for her number. They were stuck in traffic, so Jenna decided to run. Matt's wedding is about to start. Jenna saw him preparing in his room. She grabbed a flower display to hide as she climbed upstairs to see him. She apologized to Matt for what Lucy said. She also explained she was never the adult Jenna that she was now. The Jenna who stole ideas just to be successful. She also stopped him from marrying someone unless the woman was her. Matt, on the other hand, told her he felt romantic things for the past weeks they were together. However, he realized he could not just turn back the time. They grew apart from each other, and they made different choices and pursued different careers. He chose to marry Wendy, and that will never be changed. He showed her the dollhouse she threw away when she was mad at him. He fixed it, hoping that one day she would talk to him again. A decade passed by, but she never did. Jenna was crying, regretting what she had done to Matt. He was her chubby friend who did everything to make her happy. She requested the dollhouse and is willing to take care of it this time. Before she left Matt, she wished him all happiness with Wendy. Jenna went to her parents' house, just beside Matt's. She looked at the dollhouse, crying. It was only at that moment that she appreciated his gift. If only she could turn back the time, she would love Matt more than how he loves her. The wind blew hard, and the wishing dust sparkled. Jenna became 13 again. She removed her blindfold and saw the chubby Matt in front of her. She never wasted a second and hugged him tightly. This time, she wants to make everything right. A decade passed, and she married Matt. They moved into a pink house, similar to the dollhouse Matt gave her. They looked happy together, eating razzles on the couch. 